Let's talk about shade cloth. To be all honest, I have never used shade cloth before, but in all honesty, I have only grown in a high tunnel for two seasons. So it was one of those things I did not think that I needed shade cloth. By all means, uh, I don't think it's a 100% necessity. Um, as a home gardener or anything like that, people have been growing out in the sun without shade cloth for hundreds of years. Um, does it make my job a lot easier? Yeah, it does. Does it, make a, does it make it a lot more enjoyable to be working in a high tunnel when it's 120 degrees in there? <laughs> you betcha. Does it make my vegetables last longer and stay healthier? Of course it's going to. So today we are going to put shade cloth on. Now is sweeping the ground a necessity? Um, you would think not, but I would say 100% yes. Remember that shade cloth is, uh, is not as thick as this plastic. It's, it's not delicate, but it's in between um, delicate and this thick of plastic, if that makes any sense at all. So you kind of still want to make sure that you have an area that you're going to lay your shade cloth down before you pull it up over. That is, um, that doesn't have any obstructions in it. So make sure you don't have limbs and garden debris and T posts and stuff just laying up beside your high tunnel. Because if you do, there's a chance that that uh, fabric could get caught on that. And as you're pulling it, it could rip. And I will tell you this, guys, shade cloth is not cheap. So you want to make sure you invest and save your investment. So once again, shade cloth is one of those tools that could literally last you 10 to 15 years if you take care of it. Is it worth the money? Of course it's worth the money. So I would recommend the investment of shade cloth to help prolong your season, help cool your vegetables down. And like we talked about earlier, for the most part, when you're inside this high till and you're doing the work and you're stringing a couple hundred tomato plants, the last thing you want to do is sit inside of a high tunnel that's over 100 degrees to get this job done. Even if it knocks it down 15, 20 degrees, that's way better than what the alternative is. So what I'm doing is I just got a standard broom here. All I'm doing is I'm going alongside, and this is where that landscaping fabric comes in that we talk about as a tool in your toolbox. I've got a three foot strip of landscaping fabric from the inside out here that I put my posts in. Would you remember when we, you started beginning to watch this series? That is my border for my lawnmower to mow up against. So I'm away from the tunnel and it keeps grasses from creeping inside. This is where this helps you also. You can take a broom and any debris that is from the wind or lawn mowing or anything like that, sweep it away from your high tunnel. That way when you lay your fabric down, you don't carry leaves and twigs and sticks up over the top. Um, it just makes a very clean uh, workplace and, and there's no reason why you can't spend a couple minutes here and just clean up your work area. All right, as you can see, we do have shade cloth installed on our DIY tunnel here. You're just gonna need a couple things to do this. It's a very simple procedure. It was remarkably easy to install. I had it in my mind that it was gonna be um, a little troublesome to get some of this stuff up here, but seriously, one person could do this by themselves, even on a tunnel like this, or even on the 100 footer. I'm gonna attempt it today. Um, even with this little bit of wind, I think we'll still be okay. All you're gonna need is some way to attach it to your high tunnel. I use some wiggle wire pieces that I cut into about six inches, six inch pieces. And every 10 feet or so, five, six, 10 feet, you can put a couple pieces down the line. And this literally will keep this. As you can see, it is see-through. So the air will go through this so it doesn't catch it like the plastic would. But I think it, um, you still may want to be careful that you don't have anything laying on the ground that you can catch it on and possibly rip this. Like I said, this stuff is pretty expensive. And it is a cool tool to have in your box. So you want to make sure that you take care of it. That way you can use it season after season and get your money out of it. But um, uh, Bootstrap Farmer does sell uh, clips that you can actually clip to this and tie a rope to and then string it up by a rope also. But um, I chose to do the wiggle wire pieces because I already had those on, on hand. So uh, let's go show you what I got. As you can see, I've got two types of shade cloth here. One is black and one is white. I use the black shade cloth for the DIY tunnel because that's where I keep my lettuces and my school winter crops. And so what the black shade cloth does is it provides 
a 50% shade, and it also keeps my lettuces just a tick bit cooler so I can preserve them and keep them from wilting. And it also is great for watering. You can cut down on your watering in most cases because of the shade. It doesn't evaporate as quickly. And then we chose to go with the white shade cloth on the 20 by 100 tunnel because that high tunnel has peppers and has tomatoes in it that you know of. They are very light and heat loving vegetables. So this is also 50% shade. Um, the only difference is, is the, uh, the white shade cloth will let in just a little more light for those uh, light and heat loving vegetables. So let's get this up top here and get started. All right, the tools that you're gonna need to get this job are, of course, is gonna be some type of ladder so you can reach the center of your high tunnel. Ladder length is gonna be determined on the size of your high tunnel and how high it is. My ladder right here, I think this is a 10 foot ladder if I believe so, so that gets me more than enough ample room up top to get on top to put the shade cloth on. You're gonna need a clean work area. Just make sure you do that. I mean, um, that's, only, that's not only just for your safety when you're on a ladder or walking around, but that's also to keep from ripping your shade cloth. And you're gonna need some type of attachment points um, now, when ordering your shade cloth, I would recommend that you use uh, wiggle wire. Um, like I said, they do sell a clip system, which I do not have right now, that you can actually clip to the shade cloth if you would like to do that instead, um, and then tie rope to it, and then use the rope to support, because you gotta remember, this shade cloth is not gonna be structural. All this is is a covering to keep the light from penetrating as much and the heat inside the high tunnel and keep it a little more comfortable for you and your vegetables. But I choose to use wiggle wire. So what I did was I, um, I took my 100 foot length and I spaced it apart that I wanted to put a piece of wiggle wire here on this very first hoop and then skip a hoop and then put one on. So I counted all the pieces that I needed and I cut them down to length. And then I also made pieces that went over the hoop. So I want to do five pieces I want to do one at, towards the bottom here, which is going to be right here. And I wanted to do one in the center. So what I did was there's one, two, and three, and I put a piece in the middle, four and five. So what I did was I did five pieces for the front and five pieces for the back. Now, and I grouped it into a group of 10 pieces here that is taped together so that way I know I could just grab it easily and I'm not having to fight to try to get these things apart. Now, will five pieces be enough? I'm not going to know that yet. I used five pieces on my other tunnel, but my other tunnel is facing north to south. So the wind here predominantly comes from the south and goes north. And this tunnel is facing east and west. So that may or may not be enough pieces. That is something you're going to have to um, adjust as needed if I do notice that maybe this is blowing around a lot, that the wind is actually getting under it and then picking it up, I may go back through and add a couple more pieces in the key spots that I need to kind of keep this held down. So you're gonna roll this out and probably about halfway there's gonna be a fold in it and then you can pull the rest of the way. You wanna be very careful when you roll this out so you're not catching anything. You do notice I have compost bins on this side. I wanna make sure when I roll this out, I kind of stay away from that so I don't catch it on any piece of the wood or any possible new nails or screws that may or may not be inside of those pallets. And there is the shade cloth clips that we were talking about earlier. They were wrapped up inside of that. So what you, you can see there, they're just little clips with a little scissor in the center. You squeeze that together and then you put the rope on the inside, but we are going to use wiggle wire tracking instead. There we go. It was pretty easy to pull. You just want to be careful as you watch so you're not grabbing any kind of twigs or anything like we talked about earlier. But other than that, let's uh, start on that end, get the ladder, and we'll get this thrown over. All right, we are on top of the high tunnel right now. So hopefully you can see all of this. Um, what we have done is we've got the shade cloth pulled over to the center. As you can see, the shade cloth actually has this rib down the center of it, and that is for alignment. You wanna find exact center of your high tunnel. I know where my center of my high tunnel is because I can see my purlin bracket right here. So I wanna put this rib on top of my purlin bracket, and that gives me the correct spacing from one side to another. On a 20 foot wide high tunnel kit, like this all metal kit from Bootstrap Farmer is, it is a 32 
foot wide piece of shade cloth. That accounts for your arch going down to hip board to hip board. So that gives me 16 foot down this side and 16 foot down that side. So what I've done is I've put my rib dead center. I've got started a piece of wiggle wire here just to hold this so this does not move. And what we are going to do is I'm just gonna pull an inch over the side of this because if there is any excess, I wanna cut it on the back side there. So I want this side here, since this is the side that I walk into, I want this side to be nice and neat. By all means, you can have a foot overhang. You could have whatever you want. It's your high tunnel. But I prefer to have just a couple inches over so I've got enough for a handhold to pull this tight. So once you install your wiggle wire, just like it's just as simple as that, you always want to make sure you keep a pair of pocket pliers because the last piece right here is always the hardest one to get in. And it's hard on your fingertips, so you can see it right there. So if you can grab a piece and pull it just like that, go back and kind of just give it a light tap. And all that's going to do is that is the third piece of wiggle wire I have in this tracking because I have one piece to hold the plastic this way and I have one piece to hold the end wall on and now I'm gonna have one piece for that. So it's a little bit tight in there, um, but everybody will play nicely. Um, if you set it in there correctly and just kind of give it just a little love tap just to make sure those ends of that wiggle wire is actually in the tracking and then that will hold nice and tight. So let's get started. Okay, as you can see, we are on the back end now on the west side here. I've got all of the uh, tracking or the wiggle wire put into the tracking on the east side of the tunnel here. So all we're doing is we're coming through and we're just pulling on this uh, fabric. We are not pulling on this fabric. We are snugging up. That's probably a better word term here. And all we're doing is just making sure, looking down this uh, tunnel here, that we have all the creases and all the kinks out of it in any place where it may be held up. The last thing you want to do is tighten something and have it loose in the middle where the wind could possibly catch it. So it's always a good mindset to go through, double check, get off the ladder, walk around the tunnel, make sure there's nothing snagged up before you finally put it to bed. But um, I have done that, so I do know that everything is good. So I'm just going to lightly pull on this. And where it lays is where the next piece of tracking is going to go. So it's kind of hard for me to film this on this curve. So I'm just gonna let you guys sit on the ground there and then we'll do an up close when I get to the end here. Okay, like we talked about, they do give you extra length on this shade cloth so you can get your job done here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull this. You can see they gave me probably an extra two and a half feet here, which is pretty awesome. Most companies will just give you barely enough but then it may be hard if you've got any imperfections in your tunnel or any imperfections in, in the way anything is set up. And then you're, then you're kind of stressed out here. So what we're going to do is we are just going to, or what we're going to do here is we're lightly going to pull this shade cloth like we have in the past here. And I'm just going to lay this down. And then I am going to install my wiggle wire in here. Come on, baby. Last piece. <laughs> Sometimes you got to hold your mouth just right. You know, and I don't pull this completely tight, as you can see. There are a couple wrinkles here and there, and that does not bother me. That just gives me room for stretch here. You don't really want to pull this super, super tight in case you, uh, in case something, uh, the sun and stuff like that may stretch this out a little bit. I'm not sure if it does, but you never know. So I just want to leave a little bit of room here. Go through and hammer this girl home, and that should be it. Okay, now that we got that vertical piece going up, we're going to work on this small horizontal piece here. So all I'm going to do is I am going to just lightly pull this down right here, just real, just real light. This will be the last piece that we put in. Ah, always the last piece. There we go. You gotta almost have to cross it, go opposite of the one before it to give it a gap there. Give it a love tap there. And I look down, I do notice this last second to last piece that I have right here. When I put this piece in, it is just a little too high. So I want to pull this down just a tad bit again. That way there is no wrinkles in this. And it's just as simple as that to readjust it if you have to. As you can see now, we have a little bit of excess 
on the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim up. Now this step is not necessary. This excess that hangs over the end does not hurt anything, does not cause any issues. Um, I kind of just want to trim it up a little bit so it's got it looks a little nicer. Um, I'm sorry, I'm right-handed here trying to cut left. So there we go. Flip it upside down. Maybe that will help. So I'm just going to give me an extra couple inches. Uh, that way, when I do lay this out again in the next years to come, I've got a little bit of room here, uh, wiggle room on both sides to give me a little bit of slack. And I'm just going to cut it. I'm just cutting it with a pair of scissors. There you go. There you go. Everything. You may think this right here is going to hurt anything, but it's not because it wiggle wired a foot here. And then right up there, there's another foot. So this is not going to go anywhere. This is, um, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of little holes here. So the air will flow through that. That's what keeps these things down attached. And that's why sparingly we're putting wiggle wire down the tracking. But anyway, guys, I hope this was a good tutorial for you guys. I know I probably didn't cover everything. If you do have any questions, you can call bootstrapfarmer.com and talk to a service tech there. They will answer any questions that you have from the widths you need to the, the uh, what if you need white, if you need black, what percentage you need, everything like that. But guys, I hope you got something out of this. I'm going to go through it. I'm just going to walk around and make sure I got all my tools picked up. But until next time, guys, get something done. I'll see you later. Bye.